Thank you for coming. Um, today is our uh, second uh, artist panel uh, associated with the Terra Foundation's Art Design Initiative for 2024. Um, and our uh, exhibition, our programming is focusing on craft in Chicago. And uh, today I have, or we have uh, with us, uh, Ani Afshar, Lourdes Guerrero, and Yaroslava Lala Kuchma. And uh, all three are uh, Chicago-based uh, fiber artists. And uh, what I wanted to do to start out is to ask each of you to really talk about your practice, kind of how you uh, uh, started in fiber, how you came to it, what other media you may have been working with at first, and then kind of why did you choose it? Like what, you know, these are kind of loaded questions, but just to give you some direction and, and I'll just let you start. Ani, do you feel like you want to go first? I don't know. Would you, or would not? Who would like to go first? Just that it's further. That's okay. I'm gonna... So does this matter which way this just turns? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. All anyways. right, in that case. Okay. Okay. How we started? Yeah. I mean, kind of how did you, you know, our, our exhibition, our program is, our interest is kind of fiber and kind of materials that were formerly thought of as craft. But you didn't start out in fiber. No, that's what I was curious. Do you want to one specifically towards fiber or well, no. just how one got into it? How you got into All it. All right. Let's start there. Yeah. I lived on Halsted Street. I had the, I was going to say the benefit of being divorced, but so I had to move. And living on Halsted Street was a very vibrant community with stuff happening there. So when I was a printmaker at that time, um, Around, then a few years later, another shop opened up, which was a textile weaving shop, you know, where they taught the standard, typical, all the different kinds of forms of weavings. So while I was still a printmaker across the street, you visit all of these places just to get a touch, you know, feel for it. And I don't know why, but, you know, you take a course, and then... Uh, in any case, over time, I realized that I really enjoyed weaving. So I took a little beginning course. May I ask a question? Sure. Where are Halstead? Halstead and Rasco. Okay. Well, Rasco, or is it Buckingham? You know, uh -huh. I, I can't know. remember. <laughs> okay, that area. Thank you. If anybody knows, you can always, you know, give us <laughs> corrections. So the weaving, that little particular shop was short-lived there, but enough for me to feel that I would like to weave. So probably within um, a year or so, I realized that I had to give up one discipline to concentrate on weaving. There's something about weaving, but I didn't know what it was then, that I wanted to keep on doing it. So I stopped being a printmaker then, at that time, and I just took to weaving. But I didn't weave like, say like, you know, you, you know were we talking about this before? Weaving. You know, learning, or does your husband say like learning how to learn the different kinds of weaving methods, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I just wanted to do tapestries, oh, yeah. and that's the only thing I really did. Mm -hmm. In between, I did learn how to do some of the, Nancy, you would know, what is a particular kind of weaving? You do the graphs and all of that. Well, some of the different twills. Thank you. Things. Yes, that's what it is. You know, so you do table runners and that kind of stuff. I did at least get my feet wet there when I learned how to do that structured. For me, that's real structured. And uh, so at least I got a little of that in, but primarily I'm a tapestry weaver. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now? Yes. All right. Okay. So I'm Lourdes Guerrero. I had been crocheting since I was a child. Um, I grew up on the west side of Chicago, um, Mexican community, and two. They, their idea was to keep kids out of trouble. Idle hands are a devil's workshop, they would tell us. So you had to learn how to do things with your hands. I learned how to embroider when I was about five or six. I was um, 
knitting the following year, and which I didn't really like, but crochet, that's what I really liked because my grandmother crocheted and I wanted to crochet like her. So I started learning how to do lace work and make bags and purses. And I really didn't do much with it other than just the basic craft and that kind of a thing. Um, I didn't learn how to read a pattern until I went to college, but it was afterward. I had traveled some time, I was traveling with my husband in Ireland, and um, I started, I had taken with me a bag of yarn, um, my knitting needles and crochet hooks, and one book on Native American design. And I realized that I could figure out how to copy the pattern, I mean the picture, in crochet. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so I found all the yarns that I needed there and I crocheted, I, at the time I didn't know what it was called, I just called it a blanket. But um, my, our roommate at the time suggested that I um, design everything out using a graph because I was just kind of counting like saying well it looks about that big and it looks about this big and she she worked for a map company or an oil company and she said if you use graph paper you can draw on it and then you'll you can figure that out and I thought oh that makes sense so now I started drawing on graph paper or drawing and then converting it to to graphs so that every square is one stitch and that's how I started then crocheting tapestries, and I would call them tapestries because I didn't know what else to call them. But since then I've done, um, I, I went back to school, got paint, uh, I got, I, I can paint now and draw. But very recently in the last two years I have my first ever studio and I brought out a loom that I bought down in that area on old, uh, a, a friend of mine, she, yeah, she was on Halsted in diversity, it was called a weaving workshop. Yeah, yeah. And um, she bought it used it once and then sold it to me 37 years ago and it sat in my basement for 35 years. And so I've been teaching myself how to weave and how to do tapestry weaving. So it's kind of like the back is all jumbled up but I know I'm making something. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a triptych. So that's what I'm working on now. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> Thank you. It's going to be cool. It's okay. It's complicated. It's whatever it is. Uh, so I, well, I guess I, as any child, I, I was always doing something. So up to fifth grade, I was in Istanbul and I learned to em embroider, to knit, and invent ways of doing things with threads and, and wires, etc. And but after fifth grade, I went to boarding school in Switzerland. So from then on, I didn't really do anything in making things. I didn't knit or embroider or craft anything until a bunch of years later. So after, so for the six, seven years, I was in boarding school in Switzerland. Then I got married to to someone that to my husband that was from Iran, who was also in, my, in the school in Switzerland. And he was going to go to IIT for architecture. So we came to Chicago in 66 while he was going to IIT. And we were at IIT for seven years. And uh, most of those years I was teaching French at Berlitz. <laughs> But by the time we left Chicago, and I, but in the back of my head, I was always interested in art and making something. I used to try maybe embroider. I tried Edna Arno. Does anyone know? I used to went to her studio for for pottery, but, but that wasn't for me. So by the time we left Chicago in '73, then my sons were born here too. Uh, I had, I had understood that because there were some shows at IIT and elsewhere that were, that were art, but were made out of textiles. Mm -hmm. So somehow those two ideas connected. Because I knew I, I couldn't, you know, I, I, I did not, you know, I paint or draw, I mean, I didn't take classes, I didn't do any of that. So, so by the time we left Chicago, I, I, I had decided that I was going to somehow learn how to weave and make that a career. And I thought we could do this in Iran, but the first few years I was there, you know, that wasn't, you know, it, uh, you know the, 
it's very interesting and wonderful to see the 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 tribal or the local crafts or the text etc but it's not the kind of weaving that i was visualizing learning mm -hmm. and uh, and i think we had been there about four or five years uh, at that f four years that i find i met someone uh, who, who, who someone that introduced me to someone that had learned how to weave in Chicago. So I, I met, these were all, uh, I met Jocelyn Damija, who is a world scholar in saving crafts. And she was in Iran through the United Nations, UNESCO. Then she knew another Indian woman in, in Tehran who had learned how to weave in Chicago, in, in America, had a loom, etc. So, so I, 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 she taught me how to weave, but just the basics, you know, the, the warm, warp and weft, etc. And about a year before we left Iran, I, I had my husband, who was coming to Chicago, um, Boston a lot, bring me a loom. So I had a loom in Tehran at that point. And I was really, from that point on, I, I, I said, this is, this is a profession, and I will do this four hours a day. <laughs> and I did. And, uh, and that was about, you know, a year or so before the revolution. So I, I was there during the revolution. We came here after the revolution to Chicago. Uh, and, but because of our architectural connections, you know, I mean, we were sponsored and all it, it you know, so there were a lot of people that I knew that I reconnected with. And, and so that's how then, and I had been weaving and, um, well, does anyone know the Vigards, Nelly Vigard, Nelly Barr and Paul Vigard, you know, who uh, was, they were involved with Evanston Art Center. She had a show for me at Evanston Art Center Library. And, um, and then just one thing after, and then people asked ask me to make, do things, and they, I, I just, I knew the people that, and they wanted things for me to make things for them, and they were buying my, work and in, so in those years I was, it was all what I called blankets, but they're not, you know, they're, they're, they're the paintings, but they, they were blankets, so I wanted them to be, to be close to the body and also away from the body, you know, it, they, they were landscapes and I, I, I experimented with different kinds of weavings, but I ended up just plain weave because that gave me a canvas to, to paint, that kind of how I was thinking of it. And so I did, I have done, you know, a lot of, I mean, I ended up doing a lot of work in Chicago and people buying my works. Uh, and, and then, I think a few years after that, I started having Christmas sales, I call them. Uh, and but the Christmas sale also involved the jewelry. I had been, uh, Alice Adam had asked me to make a necklace and then from there I, I, was, I was making necklaces with lots of beads and cording. So the first Christmas sale was I rented the space on Wells for two weeks and it was, uh, and I got uh, uh, interns from the Art Institute, you know, to work for me. We had 100 pillows and 50 necklaces. <laughs> that was the idea. So we did that for, I did that for quite a few years, you know, the hundred pillows became, you know, less and other things, table runners, etc. So we, I would have the students in, in my house in Evanston, I, I borrowed the second loom, do the, the things that were going to be in the Christmas sale. So that's kind of, so that kind of takes us to, I don't know, 80, late 80s, 90s, <laughs> and at that point, People, you know, when you're making jewelry and they think, oh, it's wonderful, you should sell this to Nemo Marcus. Well, <laughs> it got in my head that I should make the jewelry commercial to big markets. But, you know, you, they don't know what they're talking about and I didn't know what I was talking about. That. So I, I, I made that for the next 20, 15, 20 years. Uh, I, I was doing the jewelry and very concentrated on it and I realized there wasn't, I had my last show and then um, didn't do too much weaving because it was the jewelry and for that then it was through 
the New York fashion accessory market, and uh, and 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 it has by the time that collection that concept was evolved. It had nothing to do with the beaded jewelry that I was selling while I was weaving. The whole collection, the concept, concept had to be developed. Um, I was the first, one, one of the first, or first probably, uh, designer to do the, the wired necklaces with pearls. So, I mean, that was in Women's Wear Daily by me in those years, but, but I was just a beginner at the time, so other people ran with it. More than me, I did too. But they, so for 15, 20 years, I had a presence in New York. I was doing all of the shows in New York, the, the trade show, the, the accessory circuit, and there were other shows. And I had, I had an agent in New York, and then I had an agent in, in London, and we did trunk shows there. So we did all, and the, my biggest customers were actually in Japan, so those were but they, we were dealing with them through New York. So everything, all the jewelry was being the marketed and, and accessed, and I, I did what you need to do to be in the market. So it's the collections, it's all of that. And, and I had a store in Chicago, on, on Sheffield by Armitage for eight years. At, at toward the end of the, all of that, for eight years. That was just for my jewelry. And, and nothing else. And that closed 15 years ago. I don't know. It closed when Obama became inaugurated. So about that. So it was from. I mean, this is how I think of things. It. it I opened the store six months before 9/11 and closed it when Obama got uh, inaugurated. Oh so what? However, years that is. I don't know. <laughs> and about that time, before I closed the store, I had been offered Frank contacted the Hyde Park Art Center and he had found out about my weavings, which you know I had forgotten about at that point. Excuse me, this is Frank Connett. Frank Connett, yeah. Connett, yeah. So he, he got one of my big bedspreads to restore because they had made a hole in it. And then he kind of got on board and he he thought I should have a show at the Hyde Park Art Center. So you know, I said fine, we do it. So they did so they did you know, agree to it. I mean, it was frank, and but that is that show was you know had about three years, four years, it to, to happen. You know, this, from this talking about it to scheduling it, and three years later. So when I closed the store, I had I had this Hyde Park Art Center ahead of me, and even though originally you know they had thought of having the show with what I already had, but because I had this time and I had finally closed the store and I still had somebody in, in London selling or in Chicago selling but not too much. So I went back to weaving <laughs> in those years. So now so so now, you know, the Hyde Park show was about ten years ago I think. And so I'd been weaving and I wove and then a couple more shows. And uh, but now in the last I'm gonna say I don't know, three, four years, something like that. I have just concentrated on the stitching of the two. So it, it evolves uh, extensive stitching. I, I call it a spider stitching or stitch drawings of layers of two with, uh, uh, with uh, saved objects. You know, I, I, they're not collected, they're just saved. Things that I haven't thrown away. <laughs> in the studio, and there's a lot of it. So now I think you know, I should use as much of it as I can before I die. <laughs> I think that's the long and the short of it. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, good. I can't, this is as, as, as much as, you know, it's, so that, I think that's about it. That brings us to now. <laughs> okay. Um, I was wondering also, each of you have worked or work with other media Okay, and this is, we're a little bit maybe at a disadvantage because we don't have your artwork on display here. Mm -hmm. um, but because this is being recorded, it will be accompanying the recording at a later time. Um, but I wondered if you could speak to, like for example, Ani, you um, work, use a lot of beadwork and also little pictures, you mentioned your interest now in they are yeah, yeah. Now, the, now the pictures have come in, yeah. Well, the beads, I think, you know, 
at the very early when I started weaving, I used to put you know one bead here and one bead there, and they were all very kind of uh, precious. And then there were little more beads, and then and then Alice Adam, that man, she gave me some beads and said, make a necklace. So that's where then we started making necklaces with the cords and all that things. But uh, so I, it just kind of became part of the weaving because when, when there are beads in my weavings, they, they, I, I never embroider my weavings. So everything that's beads in my weavings, it's it's part of it. I, I, uh, I put beads on a thread and I weave with that. Oh. that so, so, so it's all, it's all woven. Everything is woven. It's not embroidered. Now in, in the tools, we're calling the tool constructions, something like that, we're calling them. I've, yeah, I, I, I've been photographing. I, I started with, I don't know. Um, the, the, I, I use photographs. The Bruegels that you're saying, you know, it's, uh, but we, this we can't do anyway. That, that piece has very, uh, when you use, when you used to have pictures for, uh, printed, they gave you also the contact sheets mm -hmm. until a few years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, st I, I started by cutting those contact sheets mm -hmm. so they're tiny and, and photographing from books uh, the things that I, one, but the things that have sort of some meaning, and and, um, and then using those in the in the in in the tool construction, in the stitching, and the layering, and all of that, and I've there, it's go, gone forward. I it was the Bruegels, the first, no, the first one, the origin. It was from uh, for, uh, Paris, uh, from the Islamic galleries. I had photographed all the tiles, so that that there's a piece with that. And then, and then I photographed the book that a friend of mine gave, Richard Bourne gave, that huge book on Bruegel, so I had photographed those pages. Mm -hmm. But so now I, 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 I'm, I, I do a lot, not only, but I, I, you know, I put these pictures here and there. Can you, I, I wondered if each of you could also speak to how you use other, incorporate other media into your fiber work, because mm -hmm. you know, both of you, Use photography, mm -hmm. but you've you know kind of well. We'll start there, and then we'll oh. kind of move on. Okay, you don't want to take. Oh this? yeah. Oh okay. Um, well, let's see. I've been doing photography for a long time. Um, it kind of started back in '77 um, when I was still just learning how to develop the crochet tapestries. Um, uh, traveling to Ireland at the time. Uh, being in a new country, places, a place that I had never seen before, was just so absolutely amazing to me. And um, so I, I started photographing, and at the time I did slides, which unfortunately is really hard to print from. Um, so I've got thousands of slides. But since then, every time we travel, um, because I do like to travel, my husband travels, and so I would go with him. When I can't take a lot of big crocheting or weaving or any kind of artwork with me. I always photograph, so I have a lot of those pieces. Um, I have done things like um, cut the photographs up and um, pop little um, holes in them so that I could crochet around the edges. Like I have, I've done that a little bit. Um, I have. Um, sewn into photographs, cut and sewn into photographs. I use mostly my photographs uh, to inspire me also, to inspire me to uh, for paintings. So I will photograph certain things um, and then sketch them out and put it into kind of a collage form and then I'll know that that's what the tapestry will be or what a painting will be. Um, so the photographs are very important. Um, but I also, that's kind of how I incorporate the photography right now. But I've been doing more mixed media recently. So adding, um, kind of gluing it on to a canvas and sewing it in, um, cutting into the canvas. Because to me, if you're a fiber artist, canvas is cloth. <laughs> you yeah. just kind of get a knife in there and just cut away and start sewing and stitching. So uh, the photographs can kind of fit in there too. Um, um, sometimes little pieces of it, same thing, you know, yeah. it's not too big yet, but uh, that's how I've incorporated photography into the work. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, what was the question? Different um, media. Different media. Different knowledge over discipline. Which is, it's, you know, I realize we have to kind of simplify for the talk. Yeah, okay. It's, about, you know, it's yeah. much more All right. complicated than... Yeah. So, so I'll just go back saying my, my first beginnings of, you know, trying different things other than as you grow up as a kid, you're doing paper mache, you're doing paintings, you're drawing, whatever. Um, gradually, all of those particular interests find a different tool, say like in drawing. I will admit I do not like to draw. Sorry, Lashu. <laughs> but I, I discovered that I love to write, not write, but use, you know, the fonts to do calligraphy. So I studied calligraphy for a number of years. Um, paper mache, uh, I tried doing sculpture. I realized I, I can't do sculpture, but at least I tried it and all. But I, what I enjoy about sculpture is at least I can see the way, and I'm getting to photography. What I like about sculpture is the way some of the forms have that the tonality, you know. So I can lose myself in that. Um, but over the course of the years, I think I've gone from all of the, being Ukrainian and growing up in a Ukrainian household and in the community, there's so many different cultural applications, you know, not just the embroideries and the wood carving, all of that. So I tried all of it. Iconography, you know, it's, um, all of that, you know, the interest, I had to try it at least to see if I can go any further with it. So, um, painting, um, doing the stenciling, which is very obvious in churches, and all of that. So, I've done that for a number of years, but photography started probably in late grade school as a competitive thing with my brother. And then into high school and in college, I formally studied photography. And um, then I took it and it's been with me ever since. I love photography, I love taking pictures. Do I do anything with it? Sometimes, most of the time, probably not. It's, it's a way of um, registering for myself an awareness of wherever it is I am and uh, you know, I guess you do want to own a little of it. And I try not to collect things, but with taking pictures, it's easier to collect that. But as you say, you get a lot of negatives, transparencies and all that now currently, um, which is all going to find its way to the trash bin. <laughs> but have I used all of that? So, oh yeah, what other things have I done? When I realized that I prefer doing tapestries, you do need to have a cartoon, a mock-up, you know, of it. And uh, so, and in early, early in the years, the, influence would, the influences would be obvious, especially with the Native American, but also in Ukrainian weaving, you know, so much of the geometric weaving is similar to American Indian and other ethnic communities that do very kind of geometric floral patterning that have significance in the culture. So I did a little of that too until I finally got to the point where I just wanted to use it, since I don't like drawing and I cannot paint, um, I could never work with paints. I could never mix the colors to the degree that I could blend the colors to my satisfaction. But I can do it in fiber, oddly. So since I gave up printmaking, because it's very time consuming, printmaking extremely, but it was a wonderful medium. When I gave up the printmaking, and then again, I did do it again a few years ago, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, discipline. It takes up a lot of time, so does weaving. But I was able to combine the act of photography, which means the results of photography, the results of printmaking, 
within some of the concepts of doing your tapestry. And I, I can't really, I, this would like get into too long of a conversation, but currently that stays in me, you know, I guess those particular affinities or these are, I mean, I love doing printmaking, I love doing calligraphy and taking pictures, which I still do. You know, it gets into you and, and this becomes part of your imagery. Is that enough? Is that, will that do for now? It will. <laughs> otherwise, I don't, know. Okay. I don't know what else to say really well, other than... What form of printmaking? Do you etching, woodcut, okay. Woodcuts, linoleum cuts, mm -hmm. lithography, etchings, so all the different forms of etching, uh, silk screens. Uh, Are you partial to any particular process? I think, per, I think the intaglio, primarily. One, it was, it was easier to transport, you know. Lithography, you got those stones. Mm -hmm. uh, and etching, you can do any size, you can do any, you know. You can take it home and work on it and all. Sometimes you didn't even need a press. But uh, again, as I mentioned, um, much as I'd like to almost do printmaking again, it's just uh, splitting up your time and your energy and your concentration on something else. And I'm, it's still tapestry. Yeah. And it is primarily tapestry. Was your printmaking figurative? Sometimes, yes, but, and some of it, yes, it was sometimes at the beginning. I went through all of the different kinds of a subject matter, but then it was just to see what you could get out of a plate or out of a stone, uh, you know, all of that. So, and I did that in tapestry, you know, figurative. I would do realistic, and then I realized uh, I couldn't do that anymore, too. So, so yeah, that's I mean, a lot of your tapestries, have their, um, you notice the strokes. You know, yes. Kind of, I, don't, I think it's a brush-like. Yeah. It's a memory thing. I think it's almost, um, there's certain movement that your body, your body uses certain, <laughs> besides the brain, the hand holding objects that sort of transfers to another material that then you can just use a different form of hand manipulation because you want to still maintain that for yourself. Sort of, you guys all understand what I'm yeah, talking about. You know, if, Thank if, you. I could address, if I Please. could address that too, because I think that's the one thing that all of us have done, but I, I, it's so important to me to put my hands on the fiber, to put my hands on something like that. This is where sometimes drawing, I, I feel the same way. I can kind of draw, I don't like it. I, I mean, painting is okay, I'm all right with painting, but being able to put your hand in a piece of fiber to, to get, the, to get the, the knots in the crocheting to work the way you want, and then to see this solid thing develop from your hands, to see the weaving, to feel how much pressure you have on the yarns. You know, when you're pushing the pedals and you're trying to get it just tight and how do you pack it down? Everything is so textural. It's really in your hands. And I, it's so hard to describe to someone who's never done it to really feel what that's like. You know, when you're embroidering, you've got that certain, how much thread um, can you pull through? Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, I, I don't think about, you know, I, I just do it oh, kind of. I, yeah, I don't put too much thought in it, I just do it, I guess, yeah. it's, uh, and I've never thought that I, I could, I never took classes on any of it, so I, and so I don't know how to draw or paint either, it's, <laughs> it's just, it seems like this is the only thing I know how to do, and then this is, it just evolves itself, you know, I mean, uh, I had already started doing some of the, uh, the tools, uh, things between tools before I did, I stopped, you know, in the 90, early 90s, you know, when, at the, when I stopped weaving. I had, there were little pieces of that. So when I went back to it, those are the things that kind of evolved, but I don't, I don't know what makes it evolve. I mean, it just does, you know, one thing leads to another and mm. one thing gets boring, so you go to the next one and it just kind of 
evolves and then, then you realize, <laughs> you know, it's been a lot of years. Yeah. The, the jewelry line is just so vast and we had to do so much and recreate create the wheel, you know, five times a year almost. It's, uh, so, so just so much happened. Uh, I've, I've done, uh, you know, I've used braiding in weaving in, in the jewelry. So, you know, by braiding you can capture the beads in one way or another, but then different things that you braid with, you know, you can braid the, the wires or you can braid the threads or you can, or, or, uh, I had access to a lot of wonderful uh, fly fishing line, fishing lines, but different. You know, it, it, there was a wonderful store in Glencoe, I think, Glenview. Uh, it's chill. I mean, so, so there are all kinds of colors and all. So, um, so, so I mean, they just demand things. You know, when you're making one kind of thing, then they ask you to make another kind of thing. So you have to figure that out. You know, when you're in that fashion yes. market. So the jewelry had all of that, but it was always weaving. I mean, it was never not weaving. And it also, the endings and all of that had to be, you know, a certain way. I mean, so I didn't like the way everybody else was making it. So it had to be kind of come up. It, I told you, I, said, I had one very bad rep that at the beginning when I was sort of trying to get into the, this world. Uh, and she, she just gave me one good, I, you know, advice. She, she told me while I was, I was developing and trying to figure out how to make jewelry for my, for, for this market. She said, "Remember that you were a weaver." <laughs> and I think that was very important, you know, so because it, it's, uh, there is nothing weaving in my jewelry, but the way. You approach it, you know, it, it's uh, it, the clasps, the endings, the earrings, the bracelets, it's all in, in this, yeah, I mean, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> um, I'd like to open it for questions, if we could, mm -hmm. just to kind of shift directions. Would anyone like to ask? Um, well, I've enjoyed hearing you speak, and I, so many things that I was interested in, but one of them was sort of talking about patterns and um, the references to composition. And I, I um, so I think Adrian at one point mentioned, you know, asked a question about who you would choose the narrative, and many of you referred to patterns in your talk, and I was, so I'm interested in patterns and how we get inspiration, but it seems to me that there's also sort of how patterns connect to, they're abstract, but they also connect to cultural narratives and personal narratives. And I'm wondering if that's something you find in your work. Uh, th that's, a, that's a really good question, especially in reference to narratives. I think, um, like, like, oh, <laughs> like what you were saying, is that um, the Native American patterns were kind of where I started, looking at um, the, the patterning and what, it, what it would, and what it meant, what it meant to a particular culture, and then taking it in my early tapestries, I was actually illustrating Irish legends because I was I was fascinated with the stories of Ireland, and um, but in my mind I saw the patterning, and when you're crocheting like weaving, you're kind of in, you're you're kind of in a structure. You kind of have to have a structure, and the and the Native American patterns allowed me to say things like they're running across here. So I would take a pattern that, were, that meant steps and I would run it across the bottom of a piece. Or water, it had a certain flow through it and I would take that or I would take something from um, um, Aztec design that showed like a swirl of clouds and I would use that as part of the piece. Um, 
I, I like the, the, the patterning of that. And when I photograph, a lot of times, that's what I find myself doing is I'll walk around and I'll see like patterning on the floor or ground or, you know, mosaics. And I go, oh, I got to get that. I got to photograph that. Because I take it home and then that's what I use. But I see myself more as a narrative artist. I, I, I feel I'm a storyteller and I use my imagery to tell stories no matter what media I use. So that's why I incorporate, I started actually trying, doing some um, um, carving and um, to do printmaking that would go on, on the fabric, like just kind of putting ink on it and just slapping it on there. Well, in a more organized, I wouldn't say slapping, putting it in a, putting in a pattern way. Because I, I, I feel like I've got a story to tell, and then what is the media that I want to use? So for me, I, am, I, I consider myself a storyteller, and it's the media that varies. It's either photography or painting, or well, painting not too much, but weaving and crocheting. Those are the things that I... Um, Try on it. <laughs> Try on it. I wonder, could I ask, do you know, um, has the story been determined before you start? Usually, yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I have, um, there, I feel like there's always so much to say. I want, I want to say something. And I, I will sketch out an idea. Um, and that's why the drawings, it's like I'm always so embarrassed by drawings. It's like, oh. But at least I have an idea about where I want it on a piece of paper. And then I, I do this, but usually the idea is there, and and I'm constantly hearing things. I hear stories, and and um, you know, people's lives are fascinating. I, I I'm like, oh my god, you know, they traveled from here and there, and they did this. And how do you how do you tell the story of someone else or some something like this? How do you explain in one image everything that's happened to them? And I I think that. Uh, that's where I started doing tapestries. That's one of the reasons why I liked crochet tapestries, because I wasn't limited by the width of a loom, or I wasn't limited by the size of a canvas. I had pieces that were eight by six feet, or that were only three by six feet, or because I just said, oh, they got to run this way. I have to be able to have, you know, I can, I can put the image the way I want to. So, yeah, usually it's the narrative, the story is there first, and then I... I'm try, I try to find the imagery that I know will match what it is that I see in my head. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on in there. <laughs> <laughs> Ani, would you like to say something about patterns? Patterns, you know, I, I don't have patterns in my work. You know, I don't repeat things. It's mostly about mm -hmm. feelings, I think, more than patterns, mm -hmm. right? I don't know. It's, and so I don't, I mean, when I was, at the, my weavings, I would I would make drawings, but the, it's it's they were always big squares, except the bedspreads or whatever. But uh, I, I I would make drawings of the uh, division of space within a square. You know that that's kind of where uh, and 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 those drawings had you know their own kind of reasons for e existing. Th that kind of separate. Division of space, I guess that's it. And then when I, if I, when I wanted to weave some, put something on the loom, I would choose one drawing, let's say, and I would decide on the colors, so so, so the different spaces would have the different colors, etc., or textures. That, um, uh, you know, I use mohairs and silks like that, uh, um, and then then that, that I would have to follow, you know, so, so once it's on the loom, you know, I, I follow that direction. But within those spaces, that's where some stories, you know, some feelings or things happen. So those were kind of more, more uh, spontaneous and for the moment, I mean, still had, to, but for me, the, the important thing was for the visual integrity of the final piece. I mean, that, that's what I was, trying to achieve and so that's uh, you know and even with the jewelry I think it was always you know we created these collections with names and all of that it was all about the, the vision you know the, how, how it held together visually which you know do you think that 
uh, that um, because you were, you know, your focus was selling the work, that that was a uh, important. Um, no, well. Did that make the, that more important? I guess? No, be, no. Be, I think for me, art was visual always mm -hmm. in my house too. I mean, it's all. It's it's not about. So if whatever I was making, that's that's the test that it had to pass. Okay. You know, and especially like in recent the the two things, etc. When they're kind of auto, I I try them in my apartment to see if it's going to work with the rest of the work mm -hmm. before I say okay, it's it's fine. It's just it it it's it's that we you know it's the. Um, yeah, for me, art is always has been about visual. You know, I don't, I, I don't really go for art that needs to be explained. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it just have to look at it, and it works or it doesn't work. You mm -hmm. like it or you don't like it. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it's, it's kind of, and that's what I'm trying to achieve. And of course, what I make, I have to like, of course, but uh, it's uh, mm -hmm. that, that's kind of where, yeah. <laughs> It's, I don't, I don't know if there's anything that can be said. You know. No, the selling part for the jewelry, it, it, I mean, I think we talk about this, I think at the end, my, my downfall in the jewelry world was, I mean, I did it for all those years, so it wasn't a real downfall, but I, I never, it, again, I, I was creating the collections as an artist, whereas I was selling to places and with the help of people that were looking at that as, uh, as used to say, it doesn't make any difference for these people whether they're selling a doorknob or an earring. It's all about, <laughs> you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a salesman's job, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, and so th those were the people I was dealing with. And, and, and so that kind of probably was a conflict which made me spend more money than I should have spent to to do to 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 develop the lines, etc. Whereas you know, the people I was dealing with they, that was not what they were looking at. But that's the only way I could do it. So, and I didn't work. Also, I didn't do anything. I mean, Nancy knows this yet. It's about the branding. You know, I I I I, I probably should have done way more. Uh, for branding the, the jewelry than I did, but that didn't really interest me, you know, and mm -hmm. I didn't, <laughs> so I just was making them. So that probably was a conflict at the, you know, that mm -hmm. came head on when I decided, well, are we going to be an artist or a dealer? <laughs> so, yes. I understand. Yeah. Lala, would you like to say something about patterning? Sort of and no, <laughs> <laughs> only because uh, I wish I could answer your question easier, but it's been, uh, you know, parts of it. And I guess if I have to say anything, um, when I think of, when you're talking about patterning, we're talking about those very, very definitive, refined little structure you're looking at, well, or how? Well, in that case, okay, your question is a little different from the first one that I sort of thought what you were asking about, but, and again, this goes back to when we had a bit of a brief conversation about the, say, like the um, table runner kind of a concept patterning, you know, very structured, clean, thought out, and all of that, and more or less you can, you put it down on paper and you do follow it fairly accurately, and part of the beauty of this kind of weaving is that um, you get a very clean woven piece, you know. And if I had to say, like, emotionally think about it, say, it, I always find them very restful. You know, I'm very sympathetic to them. It um, very rarely do, do I get a sense of any kind of a 
strong, I don't want to say negative, but emotion out of a strictly patterned weaving. This is not to say the kind of a constructivist or a you know, geometric piece of work where you can see the dominance of one form over, over another form. But to me, patterned weaving is very studied or something. It's just very soothing, pleasing, and reinvigorating, whatever. But, and again, I guess I'm getting lost, maybe. <laughs> I'm not used to talking so much, but, um, um, pattern weaving. I, when I think of pattern weaving to some degree, it is very important for me to see, okay, the relationship of one form versus another form. And that could be done with the shape or the color. And I derive my sense of um, uh, kind of a subjective feeling about it because of these shapes, forms, colors, um, the way they are gathered together. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think that's really an answer to your question. I was thinking, and I think what you also said, you were talking about how, I think, how the process of weaving also is a pattern, right, that you were talking about, this um, sort of the relaxing, the calming type. Oh, very much so, process, yeah. How process exists as a pattern. It can be seen in your woven structure. Yes, but, and I don't want to get into another day conversation here, but, you know, using that word process, now, there's one that we really could spend a lot of time on. But, oh gosh, I'll leave it to others. <laughs> um, hold on, let me just see the time. Okay. Um, we, maybe we could save that for another time. Right. Because, okay, well that's okay. I don't want, you know, I don't wanna, that's, you know, unless you'd like to speak to it. I mean, any of, either of you would like to say I something? I would like to say like, Okay. My voice That's okay. Just that you need the mic. Oh, I need the mic. <laughs> yeah, I think I would enjoy that kind of a conversation at another time, but with actually having some samples. Mm -hmm. Because even when I'm listening to Ani and her work, and if anybody's seen her, Ani's work, it's harder to understand what she's talking about un unless you see it. Right. You know? Uh, you know, the, the way she incorporates the little photographs, the little contact things, and the beads, and, and when she says tool, you know, it's a different layer that sometimes it's a gauzy thing, you're going through layers, etc. And Lourdes, I've never seen your work, so I wish I could say I can talk to that, but it's easier than to say, I can understand what you're talking about, other than, so I guess we need poets here too. You know, to help us speak. <laughs> we're, we're the specialists. Oh, right, right. Well, yeah. well I, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping, or plan, you know, at, 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 in the f sort of the next steps would be to have the visuals with another conversation and even, Lourdes, we were speaking before we sat down of this idea of how would, I don't, we can decide later, but how would you feel about working on a, let's say a tapestry or something together just as a it's it's something to think about maybe during the exhibition itself that's months away it's like a year away I mean it's a long time from now you know it's as far ahead as these things get planned but or you know, or maybe just side you know just something small it doesn't have to be integrated with each other's work, but you're maybe talking about your process, something. Because I think also there's another, something else, you're all working with different threads. Yes. <laughs> and your choice of threads is also, you know, an important component. Yeah. And, and I've used, I have even used non-traditional items to crochet with such as strips of dum-dum wrappers, which are pieces of waxy kind of dum -dum. paper. Dum-dum? Yeah, the, it was a ca candy. Actually, I, I have to explain that. I remember that. those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, um, one, one, when I was still teaching, one time I opened up a package of 
art supplies that I had ordered, and instead of just pieces of paper or, or little those little bubble things, it was str strips and strips of dum-dum wrappers, like just dum-dum wrappers that go, and dum-dums are those little candies, those tiny little lollipops on a stick. They're the ones you, that sometimes dentists give you, which is yeah. like mind-boggling. Why would a dentist give, give you candy? Yeah. candies? But you can find, yes. and, and for <laughs> Halloween, you can, you so can still buy like, children. right, yeah, exactly. Like and it's a tiny little, we live in different neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, that was my dentist like too. Small, and you can, there's like cherry, and I don't know. Apple. Yeah, I don't know, grape, but but I, I saw these strips, and I thought I can crochet with this. Yeah. It's you just need a large hook. That's all, and that's yeah. and I've crocheted a couple of things with this, these strips. So yeah, I mean. Yeah. I've 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 crocheted with embroidery thread, yeah. which is really hard. I've tried wire, I've used yarn, cotton, um, and now paper. You know. And, I remember actually as a child uh, learning from other actually girls in my neighborhood to weave with um, gum wrappers. Oh yeah. Paper uh -huh. from the paper. Yeah. See all that I love to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a great exhibit. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, Lourdes, why or what interested you about um, Native American art that you brought the pattern or design book with you oh, yeah. uh, um, when you traveled to Ireland? Yeah, it's, um, well, my background, uh, my family is, my grandparents are from Mexico. Um, but I didn't really grow up with much knowledge. My, uh, my parents didn't speak Spanish. We, I really didn't have that much knowledge about my own background. But I always was fascinated by the patterning and the rugs. And this book, uh, somehow I found it. It was, it was a Dover book, and it had Native American designs and rugs. And it, it was just the only thing I had that was that was loaded, and, and it talked about Native Americans, not just North Americans, but also all the way down to Central America. And this book, when, when I decided that, I was, that we were gonna travel, I could only take one suitcase, and I, 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 there was nothing else visually that I thought I really had been wanting to look and study and analyze and just to take a look at all these designs that were on here. So. That was, and, and it had uh, samples of like just drawings of, of, of Navajo blankets. And that's when I started realizing that that, uh, th that kind of patterning allowed you to, to um, create something. And uh, I, that I could see images, like there'd be an image in the center and then patterning all around it. And I thought, oh, I could do that. So it was, it was that design, that book, that was loaded with different things. I mean, it, they called it Native American designs, but, it, but it, it, to be specific, it wasn't just Navajo and, and um, North American. It actually went down all the way down to Central America, so there were a lot of designs. Little things like uh, pottery from uh, Mexico and Central America and Costa Rica and um, and Puerto Rico and all that. So those little designs were part. Every chapter kind of had its own thing. So that it just it really was the thing that I needed. And then having the stories of Ireland in my head, they just kind of merged. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Um, would anyone else like to ask any questions? <laughs> or, or just say something. Maybe, you know, just. I'm dying to see your work. I mean, I really, all of your work. It's just, it does take away a little bit. Yes, you're just right. To hear the words and imagine. So I'm going to Google all your names later <laughs> and see if I can see some of your I'm on Instagram too. So. I'm not there, but <laughs> no, I do. I, I have a website. I have a website. I'm ready to. Yeah, I'd like to see the website. You have Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. That works. I'll find out. Andrew has so much energy. We could be here all night. 
could. Yes, we could. Well, I don't know. Actually, I'm a, I, I think it's a good stopping point for us. So, um, you know, we can pick up these conversations elsewhere at another time, but that's, that's okay. Or, you know, over coffee or yes. whatever. Yes? Yes. And the studio visits. I think you'd be interested in each other's uh, work. I mean, we can if you we can arrange something if you like. Or, okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Come to this coming, yeah. It's easy. Yeah. 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 I can arrange some at my studio. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to have people. That's wonderful. Thank you. I'm on, I, you. I'm farther, um, like Irving Park and Passner, but. Uh, yeah, that's not yeah. far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's none of it's that far. It's yeah. all good. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.